the today's uh, topic is the distributed and dynamic decision making in CPS is for the future network society. Network society. So this is the topic of uh, basically uh, my research, uh, if which somehow uh, sums up all the research that I have done so far and sums up my research question also um, in so since I have started basically my research career. So I will have uh, the first introduction. Uh, I will say a few words about myself. So uh, I was born in Dubrovnik in Croatia uh, in, uh, in a, a homeland of the necktie. Uh, well, in history, it was uh, uh, necktie came from Croatia in the 17th century to France. Uh, from Dubrovnik, I moved to uh, uh, Wilson Area High School to finish my uh, high school. I graduated there and I went to Lafayette College. Uh, then I went back to um, Zagreb, which is the capital of Croatia, to finish my industrial engineering degree. Uh, and I worked on the thesis reinforcement learning for robot uh, recognition of colors and moving in unknown space uh, with uh, mentor Professor Stefan, Stefan uh, Professor Bojan Jervic. From there, I moved to Rome and I did my PhD. Uh, before PhD, I did my Master's of Arts in Enterprise Engineering, which was basically an introduction to uh, Management Engineering uh, PhD. And I did uh, my PhD with Professor Stefano Giordani in Operations Research, basically, uh, with the um, theme how to uh, pre represent industrial systems through multi-agent systems and how to optimize them in the efficient and scalable way. Then I moved to Madrid to the AI group, Artificial Intelligence group of Professor Sasha Osowski, uh, where I worked uh, on a lot of projects. Uh, most of them were industrial projects on the projects related with industry. This is why a lot of my work is inspired by real societal challenges and real problems. And then in September 2016, I went to Douai uh, as a maître assistant. Uh, at IMT Lidoué, where I work um, ever since. So my research uh, is related with uh, basically the societal cha challenges related with the Internet of Things or Internet of Everything. Today, basically, we are all connected to Internet. Uh, we help, have all many devices that are related to Internet, and not only our computational devices, but also uh, there are smart homes, there are smart spaces, there are smart cities, and all these smart components have to do with efficient computation um, in the network. So these systems are basically uh, of a very, very or extremely large scale, uh, which go beyond the spatial and computational boundaries of individual organizations. And the characteristics of these systems is the decision making authority is distributed over the system. So there is no one decision maker. There are multiple decision makers. And usually in this context, the interests of one decision maker are contrary to the decisions of the other. So my main basically research uh, question in this context is how to um, basically efficiently coordinate individual actors of large and complex systems uh, in a scalable and efficient way, considering this size, large size of the of the systems and considering quality of solution guarantees. So a lot of times in a lot of problems, these quality of solution guarantees are difficult to reach, uh, even theoretically. So uh, once when we detect that it is a computationally very hard problem at hand, then we basically tried to prove its efficiency or at least to demonstrate its efficiency through simulation. Uh, and basically, in modeling these complex and large systems, we want to consider both individual interests. So the participation of an agent is a very important and, and it is based in special competitive systems. It is based on the will, whether I, I will decide to participate if it is of interest to me. So we consider both individual interests and the system performance. So we don't want just everyone to, individually to be happy, where we basically reach Nash equilibrium. We want everyone to be happy in the same, relatively one to another, but considering system optimum as well. So the balancing between the two is uh, basically the the leading um, uh, the leading theme in my research. Uh, regarding the methodologies that I use in my research, 
I would say the first of all, I'm interested in decentralizing distributed systems. So uh, multi-agent system modeling is a key aspect where as an agent we perceive, uh, we can describe any entity that has the characteristics of uh, capability of sensing the environment, uh, making decisions autonomously and then acting in the environment. I use uh, mathematical programming and principally linear programming, integer programming and mixing integer linear programming. Um, for the decomposition, I use for the decomposition of the mathematical programs that are central, let's say they are as one block initially, I use the composition methods to decompose these problems. Sometimes they are not easily decomposable as we are going to see later on. I use the duality theory to help improve uh, the efficiency in uh, finding the solution to this problem. And I use exact and heuristic methods. Exact methods basically for the problems that are not computationally complex. And heuristic methods once when we have proved that there are no exact efficient and scalable methods for this concrete problem at hand. So um, for the distribution of um, the decisions, I, uh, I'm kind of fond of combinatorial optimization options because uh, they are, uh, this is an algorithm that is, has a quality of solution guarantees. So basically it is similar to exact methods, but uh, it is also similar to traditional auctions like English auction, auction or, or a, a Dutch auction, auction or it ha they have flavor of uh, market-based auctions. So they can be very nice to explain in, in economical terms. I also use ontologies uh, to describe the knowledge of the system once when a mathematical programming model cannot uh, help me uh, sufficiently in introducing all the details of heterogeneous multi-agent system that we work there with or the problem at hand. A graph theory is basically the, the basis for everything here. So the optimization is done almost always in the graph um, made of vertices and, and, and edges. Uh, game theory in the context of uh, competitive agents, so when the interests are not uh, aligned, we need to introduce the concepts of game theory. And then I use simulation to show the functioning of these models in a uh, real world context when I have sufficient data for that. And when not, then I use just randomized uh, benchmark cases inspired by other work works that are related to the problem at hand. I will basically uh, orientate this talk in four main themes today, even though these themes are not the only things I have done. So I have done many other things. You might check my uh, web page or, or my curriculum to see uh, different domains that I worked at. But principally today I'm going to present multi-robot team coordination uh, topic. And this is uh, uh, the assignment problem and the distributed task allocation algorithm that we developed uh, for solving it in a dynamic and distributed environment. Then I worked also on multi-item constraint load sizing problem with back order. So this is about planning, uh, uh, production planning and scheduling. Uh, I worked in distributed fleet coordination with uh, uh, which basically extended these concepts that I worked theoretically on in, um, let's say, th th through my PhD. Uh, then in Madrid, I worked on task allocation to ambulances. Uh, basically, I collaborated with SUMA 112, which is the main organization for coordination of ambulances in Madrid. And they had a huge problem because they were using first come first serve strategy, which was not efficient at all. And they needed to, to have some quality of solution guarantees. So they collaborated with us in a project and we proposed to them a dynamic task assignment and increased their efficiency significantly by, by using it. Uh, we collaborated with them also on the problem of allocation of urgent out of hospital patients to ambulances and hospitals for urgent surgery and angioplasty uh, operation. Uh, because uh, these patients, angioplasty patients who are uh, basically heart attack patients, uh, need really to have within 90 minutes from the uh, uh, moment of appearing of their symptom symptoms, they need to have the surgery. And they were not coping well with that. So they asked us if we can introduce some kind of optimization for that. And I also worked on break assignment considering area coverage, where basically for these same fleets, if you're a patient in Madrid happening from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., basically it's you're going to have a lower probability of survival in respect to the other periods of the day due to the fact that all the ambulances are on lunch. 
So we wanted to consider the how to balance between assigning the lunch lunch breaks to the the uh, ambulances and how to keep the area of the coverage uh, under the coverage by all ambulances constrained by the 15 minutes arrival time by the ambulances. Then I will speak about the distributed route guidance systems and in more specific traffic assignment problem. So uh, what inspired by this problem of ambulances, we saw there is a huge problem with transport and huge problem with traffic uh, uh, management. And we worked on traffic assignment mathematical programming model, considering equity and national welfare optimization. So seeing that the things today, the image of the, uh, of the transportation network today is working on national welfare and user optimization and how we can improve it towards the system optimum since national, national welfare uh, sorry, since uh, user optimum can be many, many times worse than the system optimum, we wanted to introduce some kind of equity and some kind of uh, envy freeness aspects into uh, the uh, wardrobe equilibrium to push it towards the system optimum. And we proposed an algorithm for vehicle route assignment in this context. And finally, uh, once we were working with the traffic, we basically started to consider um, the evacuation scenarios. So what all these uh, horrible situations that have been going on with the terrorist attacks and so on uh, gave an impulse to uh, working towards the evacuation method. So we wanted to basically understand how we can improve the evacuation of uh, transportation networks and in more concrete of um, smart spaces, smart closed spaces, because as you might know, uh, in, in Madrid, for example, there was a arena, arena in which some years ago uh, there was a concert there and uh, um, some people died because of uh, uh, the uh, evacuation inefficiencies. So we wanted to introduce, we study the ways of evacuation, how we can use uh, the all the tools and all the AI tools that we have and the sensor that we have at the disposal to understand the situation uh, of the crowd in smart, uh, smart spaces and then proposed um, the the new centrality measures for um, the evacuation. These are evacuation centrality measure and evacuation between a centrality measure. So uh, we also uh, introduced it a new concept which is a concept of uh, agile uh, paths. So uh, agile evacuation pods are the pods where basically you can um, you can seamlessly uh, change your path in case that something yeah, the security of the path uh, is uh, in jeopardy from the point where you are to the one of the safe exits. Uh, we are basically um, still working on this, so we have worked uh, proposed some some papers on that, but this is still work in progress. So uh, regarding the first topic, the first topic is multi-robot team coordination um, uh, topic, uh, which in which basically the task is to find the assignment of N robot agents to a set of N task agents, um, considering that the given is a cost of the assignment between um, uh, the tasks and the, uh, and the agents, sorry. In, in this multi-robot task allocation problem, as I said before, the problem is to assign N robot agents to N task agents, and you want to do it in a distributed way. You don't want to have one uh, decision maker. We want to have basically the decisions distributed in the network of the robots. And the Hungarian method was the first developed algorithm um, for, this, um, for this problem. However, uh, so, we have the assumption that this is connected. There is assumption there is a connected dynamic communication network. And now uh, I'm going to present you uh, the mathematical program program for that. But before that, saying that the requirement is there is a one-on-one -on -one assignment. So basically, there is one agent assigned to one task, and each task is assigned to uh, exactly one agent. And you are given a cost function. So we have an objective function which is uh, minimize the overall cost, the sum of overall cost such that uh, there is uh, one agent assigned to one task and one task assigned to one agent. And this is basically the primal problem, which consists of determining minimum weight perfect matching of the weighted bipartite graph with weight Cij on each edge Ij. 
So uh, a, a particularity about this the structure of this mathematical program is that even though you might have uh, fractional solutions, there is always going to exist an optimal integer solution corresponding to real matching. And this is why it is computationally uh, efficient or not expensive problem. So uh, the decisional variable x, y, j are going to be one where an agent j is assigned to task i, and they are going to be uh, a zero otherwise. Now, if we consider the dual problem, we might construct a dual problem for this primary problem, where basically we introduce L alpha i. Uh, we can have uh, an economic interpretation of the dual variables, and uh, alpha i here might be interpreted as the price that each robot will pay if it gets matched with the task i. And beta j is uh, uh, the dual variable related to robot j, which might be interpreted as the robot's utility for the matching with a certain task. And then basically we want to maximize the net utility of each robot um, and the maximize the sum of the differences between the net utilities of all the robots. Considering that uh, the uh, utility of each robot cannot be greater than the total cost of, and this is basically the constraints uh, of allocation to task, uh, from, from robot J to task I. So, uh, the centralized Hungarian method is implemented in uh, the means by alternating trees, and it can be run on, uh, in running in the, uh, big O n to the power of three time, which is quite good. It's a, poly, a polynomial complexity, and uh, by uh, augmenting parts from the graph theory. So uh, we, in this context, uh, use uh, the uh, the meaning of the maintaining a feasible dual solution. So uh, we maintain a feasible dual solution uh, and, admissible, uh, and consider admissible bipartite graph, G bar, which is basically the, the set of the, all the tasks and the, the agents, and the edges, where the edges are basically the ones where the cost plus uh, the, dual, uh, the difference between the two dual prices is equal to zero. And uh, we want to find the matching of the maximal cardinality this graph G bar. I'm not going to go a lot in detail of the algorithm, even though if you are interested, you might you might ask me and I will explain the details. Um, let me just say that uh, alternating tree is a sub uh, subgraph of G bar rooted at some free task vertex T in which every path is an alternating path. And then we reach an augmenting path if this tree reaches a task leaf vertex which is adjacent to some free robot vertex R. I'm going to show you how it works basically in, um, in concrete case on, on an image. So we do the algorithm uh, uh, execution in the iterations. Uh, and if the matching is perfect, so once when all the tasks and all the agents have been matched, so you have the cardinality of matching is the size of the two sets, then you have basically found the optimal solution. So um, let's see how we distribute the knowledge. So the most important thing here is not only uh, the, the decision making, but also how you distribute the overall view of the, of the knowledge. So each agent notes its position and the position of all the tasks in the environment. And tasks are mere object, objects, as we said before. And the basic ingredient here is the inter-agent communication. So the work, uh, the uh, algorithm runs in forest. So you always keep two forests. Forest one is related to the alternating trees rooted in free task vertices, and forest F2 is really rooted, uh, rooted in free robot vertices. So basically means these are the robots that are not assigned and the tasks that are not assigned. And you basically start with all isolated task vertices and isolated agent vertices. And then we try to compute the, let's say, these costs that we introduced before. So we compute um, the uh, alpha i, which is equal to zero uh, for all the tasks initially, and beta j, which is minimum cost between uh, for all the agents j uh, and respect, respecting to all the tasks in the system. We compute the minimum slack, and then based on this min minimum slack, we find the delta, which is the key for finding um, the uh, updated values of the uh, utilities and the costs for the um, all task vertices i in f1 and all agent vertices j in f2 in f1 sorry 
Now, let's see how an, an update of the matching uh, happens. So basically, you have if you have two new admissible edges, R star and T star, uh, these are there are going to be certain cases. So in the first case, you're going to have robot vertex R star, which is free, and you are going to see it here on the image. So basically, you have R star here in the forest. This is the forest related to all the uh, robots or agents, and this is the forest related to all the tasks. Now, in case that a robot, we start with the basically initially all these are just isolated vertices, and we want to increase the matching. So in the case that we have basically the robot or the agent uh, R star is not matched with any task, then we basically bring the uh, all the subtree which is uh, rooted in T star to the forest F2, as we are going to see it on the next image. So now you can see here basically the T star is moved to the forest 2 and all its subtree moves to the forest F2. There is two second case in which no new augmenting path can be found because the robot is already assigned to its task and therefore, sorry, the robot is already assigned to its task and therefore uh, this robot just brings all uh, its task and all its subtree to the first F1, as you can see here. So basically, as you can see, the difference between these two images is that R star has moved under T star. And then there is the, um, let's say, the details about the, the implementation of this algorithm is that the uh, at the end, when perfect matching is achieved, all task vertices are matched and therefore Forest F1 is empty. Basically, all the matchings are found in Forest F2. Okay, there are some agents' roles uh, to achieve the distribution of decision making. I'm not going to go in detail there. Let me just mention that there are some pointers. Uh, each agent, this is, uh, we are considering here multi robot task allocation problem. Therefore, the, the context is robots, and we call it robots, but it can be any kind of agent. So each agent has uh, a pointer to its. Uh, older uh, agent brother and younger agent by its father and its uh, oldest son. And in this way, the communication is kept in between the agents and in this way they can share the information in a structured way and having some local information um, at the disposal and which is basically uh, each agent has uh, at the disposal its match task. So, uh, if, whether if there is a match task, if there is no match task, then the value of here is zero. It is an empty set. Father's task vertex. So basically, you know which of your uh, which task is assigned to um, your your father. And J column vector in CJ. Basically, robot J knows all its costs from it to all the tasks. Uh, and it's also its dual variable beta J and minimum slack related to task J. Okay, so I will accelerate over here because I have a lot of slides. I want to show you a lot of research. So let me just say that we did the, if you want more details on this, I will send you the slides and we can discuss this later on. Uh, I will show you just the, the results. And basically we have computed, uh, this is how the details, how, how algorithm works at a more technical level. Uh, we have uh, searched the uh, computational, theoretical, that means, that means uh, computational complexity from the terms of big O notation. So O, o uh, n to the power of three is the total computational time, which is the same as the total number of messages exchanged by the robots or by the agents. And O n squared is required to perform local calculation by each robot. So you see this is a polynomial algorithm. It is the distributed polynomial algorithm. Now, from the point of view of this uh, experimentation, we did the experimentation with up to 250 agents, and we have basically uh, seen that the computational time, cumulative time of the decentralized algorithm uh, corresponds to the best fitting curve is o, uh, n to the third. As you can see here, uh, total number of messages uh, is also corresponds to the n to the third, the best fitting curve and the computational time of the centralized Hungarian algorithm is solid. So the, our uh, algorithm behaves better than the Hungarian algorithm. This is for each robot. Okay. From the point of view of optimality, we can see here that the gap is close to zero, except for when the number of robots, the number of agents is 
equal and this was a point that we wanted to improve later on and we did in later works. So after uh, researching uh, theoretical aspects of the task assignment and multi-agent task assignment, I wanted to go further to understand what happens when some assumptions of the uh, task assignment algorithm that I proposed before are broken. And that is basically when you have disconnected communication graph and the agents are whether isolated vertices, that means they are not communicating to anyone or they are connected in a con connected component and there might be multiple connected components at the same time. So as the agents are moving, let, let's assume the context of robots that are moving towards their tasks and to, they need to reach the task as soon as possible. This is a dynamic context in which the communication graph moves dynamically and they change dynamically. So the, both the topology and the structure change dynamically in this context. So we wanted to understand and investigate how certain algorithms, and I said before that I like very much combinatorial option algorithms, how Berzeka's algorithm, for example, behaves in this context. Unfortunately, Berzeka's algorithm does not respond to this, um, to this problem. Then Zavlanos introduced the distributed Berzeka's uh, option algorithm, but he does not consider the disconnected graph. And uh, later on, we proposed the, the modification of the Zavlanos work to uh, accept also the um, disconnected communication uh, graph, which basically means that the robots might be at some points might be in communication range of each other. And in some other points, they might be going toward different tasks and therefore their um, information is going to be lost or the information that they have about the assignment of some other robots or agents is going to be obsolete. So how to deal with the obsolete information when you are in dynamic environments in which the information that you had from before is not any more um, actual or important, it becomes obsolete, or you have complete incomplete information because you have never met some parts of the system. So in this context, we investigated different strategies, how to deal with that. So for example, when exchanging information with robots that you are or with the agents that you are in communication range, whether you are going to have a strategy of exchanging all the information of all the agents in the system that you have, or you're going to have a partial information exchange, target only exchange, basically you're just exchanging the information regarding the target where you are heading to, but not anything else. And then the greedy algorithm, which is basically no information of exchange. So everyone is three, every of the agents is competing in this context for the tasks. So we want to go from completely collaborative to completely a competitive environment in this sense, and we investigated the results that are presented here in relation to the communication range. So uh, this is in the environment uh, 100 times 100. It is a square environment where uh, agents are randomly positioned in the task, and the tasks are also randomly positioned, and the agency needs to read the tasks in the minimum time possible. And then also the maximum step size is basically the velocity of the agents, whether the agents move rapidly towards their um, tasks or not. Now, uh, this is also the theoretical part, and it was at the beginning of my career. And later on, when I, as I said, as I moved uh, to, to Madrid, I started to work on these concrete problems. And the problem was, as I mentioned to you before, uh, how to coordinate the assignment of the patients to the ambulances and how to coordinate the assignment of the uh, patients in ambulances to the hospitals in the case of angioplasty patients. So, as I said before, you have 90 minutes basically to operate. If you don't operate uh, immediately or within 90 minutes, which with every next hour, the percentage of the, of the uh, probability of death is increased significantly. So you need to move really, really rapidly. So we made uh, a diagram of the behavior of um, the actions and, and the activities in the, in the emergency, uh, emergency medical system. And we found a very, very computationally expensive problem. So integ uh, integrating these two levels, so the assignment of the patients to the ambulances and from ambulances to the hospitals, considering that the surgery teams, because they are very expensive, are out of hospital, and considering that the hospitals have the operation uh, theaters that are not available at all the times, you need to integrate all these combinations together. So we uh, proposed the multi-agent system, uh, which, um, is a hierarchical, basically we proposed a, a, a bi-level optimization, uh, considering the individual interest of each patient. So in, in each patient uh, interest is basically, I want to get the uh, ambulance that is closest to me, and I want to get a hospital that is closest to me, and the one that is as uh, available as soon as possible, 
and the surgery team that is available as soon as possible. And I want basically the combination of all of these. As you can see, there are a lot of um, intertwined problems in, in, in this context. So uh, how it worked before, first come, first serve. So uh, in the real world, it's all about, OK, let's see which patient we have. And then the patients of the same category are treated in the first come, first serve manner, which is completely inefficient if we look at the system. So we wanted to propose a system that's going to consider both the assignment of the ambulances to the uh, to the patients. And the most important criteria here we decided for hierarchical optimization because the most important criterion here was uh, reaching the a patient for the first time, the time and giving him or her the first aid. And once the ambulance uh, the reaches the patient, then we concentrated on the second level in which we need to coordinate all the uh, assignment of the hospitals and the surgery teams and the availability of the operation theaters. And our uh, results were very, uh, very encouraging from the point of view of the historical data that we had. The SUMA 120 gave us all the historical data for the year 2009 uh, of emergency medical assistance. And we basically compared this um, there and in, in uh, random environments. And these are the results for random environments. Basically, in random environments, we can improve up to 40% uh, the efficiency of the system, the arrival times to the patients, uh, looking at the overall behavior of the patients and individual uh, uh, constraints for uh, maximum arrival time for each patient. Uh, later on, uh, basically, I saw that the uh, mathematical programming is a really good tool, but it is not sufficiently descriptive. So we needed to introduce uh, more knowledge to the system. And for for this, we have a, had a very simple example here of two robots, uh, uh, two fixed robots and one mobile robot, which are basically working together. They are collaborating uh, so as a multi-agent system of three, three agents. And there is a conveyor belt, and basically they need to take the pieces on a conveyor belt and put them together based on some kind of a recipe. And we worked on ontologies here, so ontological trees. So we wanted to, we proposed uh, a three layer um, architecture where on the first layer we wanted to propose a semantic knowledge that we have from the um, from the system and we did that by descriptions of product description of process description and resource description and then all the possible matchings and then trying to understand if we can some kind of in, in some way enumerate these and then propose mathematical programming for optimizing uh, this kind of more complex systems. Okay, so this is a, a very computationally expensive problem, but we can apply it to the industry, to manufacturing, and to many other uh, environments. Later on, um, we wanted to basically uh, a problem emerged because if you happen to be a patient in Madrid from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. during the lunchtime, it is most probable that your assistance is going to be significantly delayed in respect to the rest of the of the um, uh, work periods of um, the day. And the reason is that most of the ambulances are at break and there is no systematic control of the break assignment. So basically, even though they try to do it in a very human based manner, there is no systematic approach to it. So we worked on um, basically uh, modeling this and we used two we understood that there was no mathematical model of this kind of problem. So we went to search for the state of the art and we understood basically there are two kinds of problems, so break assignment problem or break scheduling problem and the dynamic maximum coverage location problem. And these two were never studied together. So basically what we did, we proposed integration of these two problems such that we can have a break assignment problem. You assign the breaks to the ambulances but you consider area coverage. So, for example, it cannot happen that one part of your city, and which is probability that the appearance of your patients is uh, significant, is not covered. So, we propose the mathematical program program for this um, uh, for this problem, describing a time horizon, a set of agents, which are basically vehicles, uh, kinds of brake types. So you can have large, short, on any any number of brake types. A uh, set of unit areas with positive incident density, density and set of unit areas for vehicle locations because these two might not be the same. Um, we introduced the concepts of minimal duration of brakes, maximal duration of brakes, 
um, coverage in, um, in of idle vehicles and coverage of vehicles that are red brake and they are different to different uh, concepts completely and the maximum allowed work time before any kind of break. So, for example, for uh, short breaks, it is three hours for large ones. It is for, from six to six, four to six hours. And we did get inspired by the legislation and we consider legislation in France, in Germany and in Spain regarding this. So uh, these are the decisional variables related of, uh, with uh, the location of each agent. As you can see, there are three indi indices, so it is a quite complex problem. Uh, binary break assignment variables, uh, uh, coverage assignment variables in um, when you are when vehicle is idle and at break, uh, densities of areas that are uncovered at time t, and this is basically the crucial decisional variable in our mathematical program and alpha a, a, a b t which is basically binary variable uh, if an agent a has started kind of break b uh, at time tau. so this is the mathematical program uh, of our uh, bio objective optimization problem so the first part we have we want to minimize the uh, uncovered areas and at the same time we want to maximize the uh, breaks assigned to the vehicles. So the objective would be they are all in the best case. Ideally, they are all uh, all vehicles are at break and all the uh, regions are covered. Unfortunately, these are contradictory objectives. Therefore, um, we had to introduce a lot of constraints there. Uh, constraints related to the coverage, constraints related to the um, coverage at break, um, constraints related to the maximum distance that each vehicle can can pass uh, from one um, time period to another, uh, minimum break time, a maximum break time, uh, maximum work between two breaks, and also here is the condition of the of the kind of the breaks, and then the sequence of breaks that you cannot have uh, a large break after the short break. If you had more kinds of breaks, you would, this would be much more complex. Okay, so basically you have here mixed integer linear programming, you have uh, a binary variables, you have um, uh, non-negative variables. It is a very complex problem. We did test it with some in random environments. Uh, these environments are basically, we did, did, so we took information that we know of legislation, 20 minutes short break. So you should have at least 20 minutes break uh, after three hours and you should have uh, a large break, which should be one hour after six, four to six hours, but minimum 20 minutes. And uh, we introduced the weights, as you can see, you could have seen in the objective function. So when the weight, um, this weight is over here, so the weight that is given to the non-coverage. So when this weight of non-coverage is uh, 0 0.9, uh, or when it is zero, so really, really we don't care about the coverage. We just care about the break assignments. You can see that nicely these converge. So the best bound uh, found solution after one hour for 30 agents, 30 vehicles, and best integer solution converge after one hour. But you can see that this increases as the, the gap increases up to 100% as the weight decrease, increases to 0 0.9. Uh, the last topic I would like to mention really quickly, I don't have a lot of time. So uh, we worked on intelligent transportation systems for route guidance. As I mentioned before, the huge problem of today's uh, uh, route guidance systems that we all use, so uh, Google Maps or Waze, is that uh, they rely on user optimization. User optimization basically relies on Nash equilibrium. And basically here, the vehicles compete for the routes. They compete for the infrastructure. So uh, port of equilibrium in the worst case can be infinitely, so in, in general case it can be, there's no bound on how bad it can be in relation to the uh, system optimum. And this is why there is introduced price of anarchy. So we wanted to see basically if we can improve this price of anarchy uh, by giving some kind of quality of solution guarantees from the point of view of the equity and social welfare. And we considered here so the system optimum, the problem of system optimum, that it is not fair. You can have a very nice solution from the point of view of the system. So every uh, the, the system in as a whole uh, works well, and the overall um, computational uh, overall uh, costs for each one of the agents is um, uh, very low. But there are agents that suffer so much 
this system optimum that they cannot bear it and they decide not to follow the system optimum and then the whole system breaks as a pyramid from the top down and therefore you cannot guarantee that your system optimum is going to be applicable in the in the real case as a matter of fact it is not today we all work Nash equilibrium in the transportation so in all kinds of competitive systems so we wanted to see if we can introduce some kind of concepts equity concepts social welfare concepts that are going to improve social um system optimum uh, so they are not going to be as good as system optimum but they are not going to, going to also be as bad as user uh, equilibrium so we introduced proposed an architecture at two layers at the first layer basically there is the assignment of origin destination pairs pods you want to consider the pods that are efficient but at the same time that they are fair for all the um, origin destination pairs. A good thing about user system, uh, user optimum is that all the pods of the same origin destination pair are fair, but uh, different origin destination pairs have of, of the same distance. For example, if you want to see uh, a physical distance, they might have quite different arrival times. So they are not fair. The system, uh, the user optimum is not fair for, um, for different origin destination pairs. And we wanted to fix that as well. So at the first layer, we basically propose this kind of negotiation with intersection and coupled OD pairs through dual prices up to the four levels. And then here we find efficient pods for all the pairs, efficient and, and envy free pods for all OD pairs. And then at the second level, for each OD pair, we consider the vehicles that want to go there on this OD pair. We consider the history of the vehicle, satisfaction of the history of the vehicle, as I'm going to show later on. And then we assign the vehicles to the routes based on optimizing the overall satisfaction of the system. So it is not about which part you're going to do today. It is about overall, you have been using this for one week. How is your satisfaction? And how has been your satisfaction uh, with the system through the week? And then you basically increase or decrease the efficiency of the parts that you propose them, or, or you propose them less efficient or more efficient parts based on this kind of satisfaction. However, this is a huge, huge, complex problem and the uh, we wanted so uh, I, I spoke with with uh, some colleagues uh, uh, at Lamsad and and there there is a concept of um, a different concept of fairness uh, and uh, but uh, here we proposed a Nash social welfare optimization which is basically let's not consider the sum of all the so we don't want to minimize the sum of all the uh, arrival times and the, considering the flows in the network, let's consider the product, because the product is much more uh, fair, it, it's uh, egalitarian social welfare, welfare is much better, and it's utilitarian social welfare does not suffer that much, okay? So I'm giving you an example. Example in sum, if you do a sum of zero and 100, uh, 199 and 50 and 50, uh, the sum is always zero, 100. But the, the, the equity here between one and the other is quite different. The product resolves that. So the product, if we want to minimize the product, then uh, we basically uh, balance it. Okay. So one times 100 is not equal as 50 times 50. 50 times 50 is much more balanced. And if you want to maximize the, the, uh, this kind of uh, social welfare, you are going to reach much better. So for equity, we introduced envy criterion, which is basically um, a factor which is called L alpha envy free allocation. Um, and alpha is a maximum tolerance factor for non enviousness such that alpha is between zero and one. And this is the constraint that we introduced for all the origin destination pair. W is origin destination pair. So we want to maximize um, the utility, which is opposite of the cost. This is why we have one over gamma W and we want to product product of four origin destination pairs, which is basically if we apply the log there, you can have minus sum log gamma W. So the mathematical program that we solved now is made of the objective function over here, which includes this Nash well, social welfare optimization. The constraint on, so we used part of the composition. So we didn't concentrate on our composition, but the composition is much more efficient than the arc of the composition. So we basically concentrated on the capacities of each arc. We concentrated on envy freeness of which origin destination pair. We considered the, the demand of each origin destination pair. So we wanted these flows to be equal to the demand. And obviously we had that the decisional variables should be non-negative values 
for all efficient points. And we assume the, the, the set of efficient points here. Uh, now, we did the, 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 the composition approach because we are concentrated on distributed multi-agent systems, and we did it at four levels. So for each one of these constraints, we introduced Lagrange relaxation, uh, 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 um, sorry, Lagrange uh, multiplier, and introduced one by one in this work. Um, these four levels of the composition. And you're going to say, this is a very, very complex problem. I completely agree. This is a very complex problem, but it converges. And it converges as long as the time period, so the time horizon of this problem, of the, of the lowest level of the problem, is larger than the time um, of time period, duration of the time period of the upper one. So this one needs to converge the fourth one is converged to reach the third one, the third one is converged to reach the second one, and so on and so on. Okay, so that was the first layer. The second layer is basically uh, the satisfaction of each agent, and we basically introduce, as I said before, sat satisfaction factor, where you consider there is a some weight given to the satisfaction assigned to the vehicle uh, with the path assigned to the vehicle at period t and period t1, t minus one, such so that we can track the dynamics of the of all the system up to the period one, and we compare this satisfaction is uh, uh, is computed considering the uh, the path that is assigned to a vehicle or to an agent e, and the shortest path for that origin destination pair. In this sense, basically, we can really balance the assignment of the of them. We tested it in a simulation on random networks uh, with 50 uh, nodes, and this basically comes up to 2,500 origin destination pairs, which is really a lot. And the results are basically that you we, we gained, so we introduced NV freeness, we introduced uh, the Nash social welfare optimization, and we saw significant improvement in respect to the user optimization. So even though we are far away from the system optimization, the, the savings that you might uh, have here can help the system owner or the system owners, if we are speaking about distributed system, to uh, incentivize a very small number of agents that are not going to have their solution better in respect to the uh, Nash uh, equilibrium. And therefore, you, can, you might find monetary ways or some other ways of um, balancing this. But also considering the historical dynamics, these are going to be assigned always to different origin destination pairs with different agents, vehicle agents. Okay, the last topic, I basically have one minute for that. We considered basically in emergency evacuations the, the, the concepts of agility. So it is not really, we understood also from the research that it is not that today's research uh, state of the art does not consider uh, in evacuation the dynamics of what might happen in the future with my evacuation path. So usually the paths are computed in a way, in a static way. You can find these uh, these paths for evacuation usually too um, in in the on the walls. Uh, they should be presented on 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 visible positions. But these paths very often might be both of the paths might be uh, uh, really under jeopardy of uh, low safety. And therefore, by considering the technologies that we have today to consider cameras. Uh, all the uh, IB beacons and so on. We can track people in the uh, by using smartphones. We can track people in this uh, closed environments, and we can also track the security of each one of the spaces by considering temperature, humidity, uh, cameras, uh, visual uh, visual information, and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we introduced the uh, uh, two kinds of centrality measures. So this is more theoretical work: uh, evacuation between the centrality and evacuation centrality, for which we compute the uh, the agile uh, evacuation pods, and these evacuation pods are basically the pods that are seamless and rapid in evacuation. And uh, uh, basically, we uh, modeled it, this as a maximum flow problem um, over here, and uh, we found the dual of the former problem, uh, and this was basically the evacuation uh, centrality. And then we pro proposed an algorithm that is going to compute for each uh, a node, a sufficient number of efficient and agile pods uh, to evacuate. Okay, we did the experimentation on a very simple case, and basically this is all what I had to do and to present today. Thank you for your attention. Here is the bibliography, and if I, you might want to ask